Hello, this is Joseph Zoll. Today we'll be discussing why are fake ballots impossible. We'll deal with it right here, right now. I'll be talking generically. There'll be some differences among states and procedures change from time to time. So your state may operate a little differently than I'll describe. But this is a generic description with four reasons why fake ballots cannot get into the system to be counted. We'll also discuss why duplicating ballots is legal and proper. Now, that was one of my jobs when I worked on election board one year. I wanted to see for myself what the procedure was. I took the oath, underwent the training, and duplicated ballots as I was supposed to. And we'll get to that. There's also a question sometimes that ballast harvesting is the same as stuffing the ballot box, which is not true. And I prepared a short for you on that, which is already published. So I've been on the inside, watching the gears move. In addition to being on the election board one time, I, another time I was an observer for my political party. We each showed up early to go through the same training as the election workers, Democrat, Republican, and also Libertarian. Interesting thing. After the training was concluded and election workers were sent to the tables to take on their various tasks, all of us went into the center of the room together, shook hands, said glad to know you, and congratulated each other on making the sacrifice to come down and observe the election procedure as part of the democratic process. Because we were missing the parties, you see. But that was something I did, again, to be on the inside. Also, I was active in my party, was on my state committee, and ran, although unsuccessfully, for the state legislature one time. So while I've studied politics all my life and have taught political science for many years, today my discussion is from practical experience that many people don't have. The first three reasons why the fake ballots are impossible is that ballots have serial numbers. Serial numbers are issued on the ballots that are sent out in the mail and also that are sent to the election precincts for the in-person voting. Also for the ones in many states where people can come down and vote in advance at election headquarters or sometimes satellite locations in the area. And these ballots are all serial numbered so we can keep track of the ballots. The number of ballots sent out will always be more than the number of ballots returned because some people who intend to vote by mail or to drop the ballots off in a drop box will not return them for one reason or another. It should never be more. And we know what the serial numbers were that were sent out. So what are the three possibilities if somebody did try to produce a fake, a phony ballot? One is they put no serial number on it, in which case the computer will reject it, even if human eyes don't detect it before that. It can't be a valid ballot. Another is they may make up a phony serial number which therefore will not match serial numbers of any ballots that were sent out. And the third possibility is they happen to duplicate real serial numbers, and that would cause major commotion, confusion, chaos. The computer would be saying, I already counted this ballot that came through with the same serial number. And then we won't know which ballot was correct, which was valid, which was not, and we are going to have chaos. But that has never happened. So those are the three possibilities of how you can prepare a ballot that you think is going to get to the system, and it won't. The election departments have ballots on reserve also, with serial numbers, in case a particular precinct runs short of ballots. Sometimes people make a mistake on a ballot, and they ask for another ballot. The serial number on the spoiled ballot is marked void, and a new ballot is used. Sometimes a precinct can run short. So always good to have a backup plan, always good to have ballots in reserve. The fourth reason is how the ballots get into the system. Ballots that are sent out by mail for mail voting or absentee voting come back in envelopes, either by mail or placed into drop boxes. Ballots used on site come in the ballot box in the voting location. Election workers at the voting location have an empty box in the morning and a padlock. They open the box first thing in the morning and turn it so all voters are already present and any political party observers present can see for themselves it's empty. Then it is padlocked. After the polls close, a combined team takes the ballot to election headquarters. One Democrat and one Republican, 
Libertarians, Greens, and independent candidates can have their people there too, but when there are small parties or independents, they usually don't have enough people to cover everyone. But we have at least one Democrat and one Republican guarding the ballot box and taking it down to election headquarters. The staff of election headquarters has the keys and will unlock the ballot box for the ballots to be fed into the computer. So how could fake ballots ever get in? They cannot. Someone shows up with a cardboard box filled with ballots. This is not going to be accepted. They either come in an envelope or they come in a padlock ballot box. There is no other way to get into the system. And I said I duplicated ballots. Yes, and there's been video of election workers doing so from security cameras, and they were accused of changing the votes. So before explaining that, let me give a brief commercial. As you see behind me, I have some books for sale, and to find out more about them or to make a purchase, to consider making a purchase, there is a link below in the description. Also, there is a link for some free material I have for you, and if you want, you can buy me a coffee. End of commercial. Sometimes ballots arrive crumpled and will not feed into the computer. What we would do, one Democrat and one Republican, was to take the damaged ballot as turned over to us and take a blank ballot that was a different color to note that it was a duplicate ballot. We would take the serial number of each ballot and write it on the other so it could always be cross-referenced if necessary. Of course, by this time, there is no way to identify who the voter is so the voter's identity is not compromised. Then working together, we copy the first ballot exactly to the duplicate. The duplicate goes up to the computer room and the damaged ballot goes into the file just in case it needs to be referenced later on. So that is to keep a ballot that was somehow damaged from not being counted. We have a way to create a physically valid ballot as far as the computer is concerned and get that vote counted. And we have people from different parties watching each other. Then there are overvotes. Here we do not duplicate the ballot exactly. What happens is the computer rejects a ballot that, for example, has two votes for president. The person voted for two of the candidates. They can only vote for one as a valid vote. You get one vote for president, so the computer will not accept that. It will come to our desk and we copy the ballot over to a duplicate, as I've described, except we would not be able to copy over any vote for president. Because the voter is anonymous, we cannot call the voter and ask which candidate they really like just a little bit more than the other, even though they seem to like both. We have to disallow that vote. For president, not the entire ballot, we make sure a valid ballot from the computer's point of view is placed into the system with every vote that is a legitimate vote. So that's my explanation. Uh, one other thing is that some people accuse people who are harvesting ballots of stuffing the ballot box, which isn't true. I have a short for you on that, already published. So I welcome your comments. Be sure to subscribe and click the notifications bell so you don't miss any of our new videos coming up. Thank you for joining me today.